So yes, we can do Star Trails in Cyril. Cyril actually has a Star Trails script that's available for download. Their script requires you to use calibration frames, so you also need dark biases and flats. I've taken a copy of that and modified it so we don't need to use calibration frames. I'll show you where we can get Cyril's version, and I'll leave a link to mine in the description. But in this video, we're going to be using my script, so just the light frames. So for my session, I took 240 15 second exposures, total of an hour of exposure time. So that's what I'll be using in this video, but stick around to the end. I'm going to show you another final image where I actually had a foreground in the image. It's not a composite. It's actually multiple images with the foreground in place and the star trails in the background after we run it through the script. So this is a fun one. So let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, so like I mentioned in the intro, my script is just a modified version of the Star Trails script that Cyril has already made available for us. If you want to use calibration frames, if when you shot your Star Trails, you also shot darks, biases, and flats, and you want to use those files, then you want to use Cyril's Star Trails script. So in within Cyril, just come over to your hamburger menu and click on Get Scripts. It'll take you over to the document page about the scripts, and right here underneath Getting More Scripts, is a link to the GitLab repository. So I'll click on that. Under pre-processing, you will see OSC Star Trail. This is the one that includes needing the calibration frames. So if that's the one you want to use, just click on the link and then come over here and click on your download button. And you can download that script instead of the one that I've modified. So like I said, we're going to use my modified version of the script today. So the link is in the description. When you click on it, you'll be prompted where you want to save it. So I'm throwing it in my downloads directory. Close Chrome out. And if this is your first time using any kind of external scripts with Cyril, let's walk through real quick what you need to do in order to use these. So as you can see here on my hard drive, I have a folder called Cyril scripts within my astrophotography folder. You can create whichever folder you want, call it whatever you want. Naming doesn't matter. But this is where I keep all the custom scripts that I've written and anything in the future that I may download from somebody else. So I'm going to take this path, highlight it and copy it. And then if you come back over into serial and go to your menu again, and then preferences and then scripts, you want to add that path to the storage directories list, which I already have right here. It's all I need to do. So now any scripts that I place in this directory path will show up within serial. So let's go back over to my downloads. There's the script that I downloaded. I'm going to cut that and I'm going to put it into my serial scripts folder. And at this point I can either shut down and restart serial, or you can come to the command line and type reload scripts. Now, if you come up to the scripts directory, there's the new script that we just downloaded. So again, this does not require calibration frames. So if we come over to my working directory that I'll be selecting, you can see I simply have a lights folder and in the lights folder are all the images that I took that night and we'll come over and click our blue house button, make sure our working directory is set, which it already is. And again, you can always verify that up top that you're sitting in the correct directory. And you simply just need to come over to scripts and then run the DSA star trails without DBF. DBF is dark biases and flats. You click that. We'll give it a few minutes to run and, and come back and see what we got. Okay, the script has completed. Our image is stacked. So we're just going to come over to the open button and we're going to open up our result file. And I am currently in a linear view, as you can see down here. So we're going to change that to auto stretch. And there's our star trails along with all of the plane trails. <laughs> so uh, obviously I'm pointing north here and to my north about 30 miles away is a major airport. I probably should have started shooting this later in the evening when there was less air traffic. I wouldn't have as much work to do to remove these, but in a few minutes, we'll jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how to remove these. Again, there's so many in this image, it's it's gonna take me a minute to get them all out, but that's fine. So we're gonna do a little bit of work on this though before we take it into Photoshop. Just like any DSO, we're gonna run it through a few steps to get it to look a little bit better. Again, starting in our auto stretch mode, we can actually do a background extraction. You can see I've got a glow down here on the bottom. You know, everybody always says it's best to do it really dark skies during new moon. That's not always possible. So for me, it's not anyways, not for my back. Yard. So we're going to start with a background extraction and I am just going to lay some sample points manually using the RBF interpolation method and you don't need very many of them and I'm just staying off of my trails when I do this just letting it know where the background is supposed to be and see if we can't knock down some of this light pollution that I have. Okay, that should be good enough. We're going to hit compute background and then even the background out pretty good. The corner is a little bit dark, but that's fine. 
we're going to be cropping anyways to get this little top of the tree out of here in the final image anyways so once you're happy with your background extraction click apply and then we're going to do a color calibration so image processing color calibration and color calibration photometric won't work in this instance since the stars are all trailed we are going to select an area of our background that does not include the trails click use current selection and then background neutralization and then for our white reference just going to grab an area where i see you know different brightness and contrast across the trails just to give it a good sample to work with click use current selection and then apply and you can see a lot of that green went away everything looks nice and balanced one more thing is we'll come up into image processing and then do a remove green noise click apply and then close okay so now we've got the image looking the way that we want we're going to come out of auto stretch and go into linear mode we'll come up in image processing right and just like always we have three stretching tools that we can use i found just for you know quick and easy the histogram transformation works pretty well for me you can use ghs or the ass sign transformation if you want experiment with it see which one gives you better results but again histogram transformation does a good job for me so I'm just going to come down and hit my little cog wheel here to do the auto stretch. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so I can see my mid-tone slider and just move that over slightly just to darken it up a little bit, wherever you like it. And then click apply. And now we're stretched, ready to go into Photoshop to remove all these plain trails. So we're going to come over here to our save the current image button, change it to TIFF. And I am just going to call this one start trails. Click save and then 16 bit and then save so now if i come back over to my working directory there's my tiff file and we'll open that up in photoshop so removing plane trails there's numerous ways of doing this i'm sure i used to use content aware fail and you still can and i'll show you that method first but i found the new generative fill the artificial intelligence that's in the latest version of photoshop to do a little bit better job for us but Again, I'll show you the uh, content aware fill first. I just use a polygonal lasso tool and just draw a selection around the plane trails. So we'll start with this one over here. And I'm just drawing a selection around it. Left mouse click at each point. So I'm getting my box around it. You don't want to go too far away from the plane trail and you don't want to get too close to it. You got to give the software some room to, to sample the outside areas of it so it knows how to use it. So once that's selected, you can come over to the edit button and say content aware fill. And you can see as a preview right here, you can leave it on rectangular, which is where it's at now, or you can go to auto and there's also a custom if you need to modify things. But you can see in the preview that it's removed the plane trail. So I can just click okay and I'll hit my deselect and you can see it's gone away. Now you can see there's, it's kind of messed up this plane trail a little bit, right? It's smeared it. So if I just undo everything and bring that back and instead of using the content aware fill, when you draw a selection, this box again in the new version of Photoshop will come up with a generative fill, which is the artificial intelligence that they've just released a few months ago. If I just click that button and instead of telling it what I want to generate, because you can tell it to put AI generated objects in your image, but that's not what we're going for. And just leave that blank and hit generate. Give it a few minutes to think about it. And you can see it not only took that plane trail away, but this existing trail right here, this existing star trail right here has not been smeared. So it appears it does a little bit better job than the content of where fell. So this is what I'm going to use to remove all these plane trails. One thing I do want to mention is either method that you use, if you try to take out something that is completely across the screen. So if we came up in here and I tried to take out this set of plane trails, doing the same thing, creating a selection around them, and then hitting generative fill and then generate. It does not do a very good job when you have that large of a selection. And I'll show you here in a second when it's done. So you can see, and we'll zoom up in this area especially, all these star trails got all squiggly, they're smeared, they're smudged. It just doesn't handle it very well. So what I found, and let's undo all this, is do these in small sections, right? So if I come up in here and just a little bit at a time, remove them and I know it adds to the time to complete everything but this is what gave me the best results little baby steps and it, it gives you a better results so you can see here all of my existing arcs are still nice and clean there's no smearing there's no squiggly lines in the ends so I am going to spend some time getting this image cleaned up and come right back when I'm all done 
Okay, just like magic, all the plane trails are gone now in this. So at this point, and it's up to you, you can like the image the way that it is, or you can come up into your filter and your camera raw filter and make adjustments to your liking here, right? Again, just like I do with any of my DSO objects, you can increase or decrease your, your contrast, exposure, highlights and shadows, you know, just wherever you like things at. It's all preference at this point in time. Clarity, if you need to kind of maybe a little bit of a sharpening effect for it. If you want to bring those colors up a little bit, do a little bit of vibrance. When you got the image the way you like it, click OK. And if you need or want to, a little bit of a crop here, done, and then save. So that wraps up that image. I also wanted to show you, you guys can do the same thing with a foreground in your pictures and you don't need to create a composite to do this. So this is a image. Actually, I think this is probably the first Astro image I ever took with my Canon when I first started in the hobby back, uh, I think it was like in March, 2021. So I took a bunch of two second shots. I think I, it was somewhere in the hundreds. I honestly don't remember, but um, this is not a composite. These are just images straight out, raw images straight out of the camera, ran through the same procedure I just showed you with the star trails. Obviously not facing north, so we're just getting the, the arcs behind the cabin here, but this, this is straight out of Cyril, stacked. Same adjustments that I made to the last image and then this touched up in Photoshop. Hope you guys found that useful. I just wanted to showcase one more thing that Cyril can do that maybe you didn't know about. I want to take the time to thank all my members both here on YouTube and over on buymeacoffee.com. Thanks to each and every one of you that have watched my videos, liked, shared, subscribed. Really appreciate it. Like I mentioned before, this has been a lot of fun for me. I enjoy making the videos. I enjoy the hobby in itself. I enjoy helping you all. And it's just been a lot of fun for me. So that wraps it up for this video. I'll see you in the next video in clear skies.